in mind. All right, little video for Penny. Hi. Um, I wanted to make sure she liked the salmon before I committed to a video. Um, I cannot stand the smell of fish, so I hope she appreciates the love I have for her because it was not a good smell right now. So it's literally just salmon, actual real salmon. Oh yeah, yes. Um, so what I've been doing with her, um, the first part of last week was really her kind of warming up to me. She wasn't very comfortable with working with me. She kind of was just doing her little squeakies and questioning what the heck was going on. So now that she's willing to work with me, um, I'm really fixating on creating a marker system for her. Um, so I'm, hey, no. a marker is going to be a word that marks a moment in time that I like or dislike the behavior that she does. And for her, that's going to announce the arrival of a reward or uh, pressure or like a consequence or something. Shh, good. Um, so what that does is it, like once we associate the two things, uh, marker equals food or pressure or whatever, um, essentially that's going to bridge the gap between desired, undesired behavior and delivery of those things. So that there's not any confusion of what happens between those two events. So, um, so there's a couple of different markers we have. Yes, good, okay, and no. Excuse me, I have a bubble in my throat. Um, those are really going to show her what I'm looking for within each behavior. So um, the marker, yes, means I like what you did. Come take something from me. Um, I'm going to add in a little bit of movement, yes, and have her kind of chase after that reinforcement just to kind of up its value by tapping into her prey drive. Um, and that's going to be a terminal marker that is always followed with a reinforcer. So I'm going to use that one to build engagement, to shape new behaviors, um, to build enthusiasm, to get us out of sticky situations, um, anything like that where I need there to be a little bit of movement and excitement. If I am sick, good. Asking her to go into a behavior and I want her to stay in behavior, good. I'm going to say the marker, good. And I'm going to pay her in behavior. Right now I'm paying her every time I say good just to create that association. Eventually I will need to pay for every single thing. But a good marker is going to be, or going to imply duration. Good, I'm going to pay her in behavior so that I can show her that there's value in staying in behavior. If she comes out of behavior, I will say nope and I will guide her back into behavior. The terminal marker is going to be okay, meaning that the behavior is over. Um, I'm not really doing a lot of payment right now for that. I want that to be more, much more of a neutral response, meaning you can, you're done doing that, you can go do what, whatever you want. Um, so for her relationship building with me and kind of getting her more comfortable in her environment, I'm mostly gra gra uh, gravitating towards that yes marker. Penny! Yes! So I'm getting her moving towards me, following me around, figuring out how to follow my hand so I can lure her quick into different behaviors. Yes! Um, I want to use movement to my advantage. When I ask her to sit still for too long, she gets a little leaky, a little whiny. Um, and that's because she does, she is an anxious dog and she has a lot of pent up energy. So she expresses her anxiety through movement. Um, so right now, because she doesn't know exactly what I'm expecting of her, yes, um, I don't really want to ask her to sit still for long periods. I want her yes, to be a little bit more constructive with that movement. As we progress, I'll start teaching her how to settle and how to self-soothe and, and relax a little bit, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so I'm using that yes marker to build engagement, to, to create movement with me, um, loosen up a little bit, and to also help her understand how to respond to leash pressure because I know it's really a big thing for her. So dogs naturally resist tension um, in the leash. They kind of see it as something that they just deal with to get from point A to point B. And I want her to learn how to Yes, learn. I want her to learn how to shut that pressure off by moving into the source. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of do a little bit of pressure, yes, and as soon as she moves towards it, the, the lightest amount towards me or towards the source of that pressure, I'm going to discontinue applying the pressure and mark and, mark and reward. So, yes, good job. Once she's a little, a little bit more fluent with that, uh, we'll start working on an actual heel. Right now I'm just kind of free shaping it so when we're walking around whenever she's kind of yes, right where I want her to be, I will mark and reward that to kind of show okay this is a good spot to be. 
Um, and then I'll start raising the bar with applying leash pressure to, to fine tune that position. We're not quite there just yet. Right now it's about building good, good vibes in this area um, and showing her what I'm looking for before I actually tell her what I'm not looking for. Okay. Yes. You're all crumbly. It's hard to give this to you. Girl. Penny, please. Good. This is disgusting. Good. The place command is going to be something that I use. Good. To what I was talking about before, where I'm getting her settling and, and uh, self soothing, self regulating her anxiety and her arousal. Good. Um, so right now I'm just kind of teaching the foundation of what it needs to go into your place. Okay. Nice. Um, there's fish everywhere. Please. Good. Pity. Yes. Good job. That's gross. Um, at home, if you guys want to be a part of training, um, my biggest thing is, is the markers, uh, helping reinforce them. So you can do the yes marker, walk around with her food, if she has some stomach, um, or her treats, whatever. Before you go to give the food, just say that yes, and then deliver the food. Um, I like to do it a little bit of randomly when she's just doing her own thing. Um, if she's looking up at me, or the same thing, like if you kind of yes, pull her towards you with that leash, the moment that she responds to that, give her that yes marker. Um, that just kind of strengthens that behavior, that response to the marker at home. Um, so it could be a little bit more reflexive for me. Like right now in the training room, she's pretty responsive to it because there's not a lot of competing motivators. But once we start going outside and, and adding in distractions, I think that's probably going to be where she struggles a little bit. We'll have to move at her pace with that and, and introduce those things as she's willing to take them in, take them in and not like shut down. So um, we're not quite there just yet. Um, I want to move at her pace and introduce her to like a little bit of stress here and there, learn how to deal with stress. I want her to experience a little bit of stress so that she can be successful in removing that stress so she learns how to cope. Because right now she's kind of like, I don't really know what to do, I'm stressed out. Um, frustration and stress, it's, it's normal and it's healthy to have a part of her life um, as long as it's not flooding. Um, again, I want her to understand how to work through stress. So a lot of what I'll be doing is making a little bit of a stressful situation, letting her have a small win, go back to something really easy so that it's easier to overcome and then she feels better about herself. I don't want it to be constant progression where there's more and more and more and more stress because that's what's gonna have her shut down a little bit. I want it to be a little bit harder, super easy, a little bit harder, super easy so that she feels good about herself and she feels like she can deal with those things and it's not always something new. Um, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, she likes the salmon. Um, I'm assuming that since she has the salmon treats that there's not going to be an issue with salmon, but just let me know if there is. All right. Hey, girl.